All right, some camera issues. We're going to start this back up again. All right, we're trying to find the overall x component of our net force by summing the forces of x. We're trying to find the overall y component of our net force by summing the forces of the y direction. Again, all of that to find what the net force is. What force could replace force A, force B, and force C and have the same effect? That's our ultimate goal in doing this. Before we get started and go any further, um, we might want to just think about, just so we have a conceptual understanding here, what's going on. Do we think the overall force is pulling this object to the right or to the left? Well, FA is X exponents pulling to the right, FC is pulling to the right, FB is X exponents pulling to the left. Which wins out, FA's X and FC's X, or FB's X? You might have some idea, make a quick prediction. Same for the vertical. Is this object being pulled overall up or down? Well, looking at your components, FA's Y is pulling upward, FB's Y is pulling downward, and FC's Y is pulling downward, and those look to be pretty large in magnitude. So I would guess before I even start that uh, the right and left look about equal. Maybe the sum of these is a little bit shorter than this one, so maybe leftward, we'll see. Vertically a little bit up, quite a bit down, and even more down. I'm thinking it's being pulled down quite a bit. Well, let's go ahead. Let's plug in some numbers and see what we get. All right, FA is X component. We've already got the signs figured out, so now it's just a matter of using our shortcuts over here to find those components. Let's do this quickly here. FA is X component is going to be the magnitude of FA times the cosine of theta, so positive. FA is X component is FA cosine 20. So 40 cosine 20 minus FB's X component is going to be FB times the cosine of its angle. So 60 pounds times the cosine of 20 plus FC's X component um, is going to be FC times the cosine of its angle. Plugging those into our calculator. I'm just going to run down so you can check your own work as you do this. And I would suggest that you do, in fact, try that just to make sure you're not making an error, making sure you're not in radians. You want to make sure you're in degrees here. And that's 9.55. Add all those up, and you get an overall sum of the force in the x direction of negative 9.24 pounds. What does that mean? Well, it means the sum of all the forces in the x direction has a magnitude of 9.24 pounds, in the negative direction. It's 9.24 pounds to the left. It looked like the left one might be a little bit bigger than the sum of the two rightward ones. We were right. Now, let's find out if it's being pulled upward or downward. Let's sum the vertical components. So the sum of the forces in the y direction. I would suggest taking a second, pause in your video, try this out. See what you get, and then come back and watch the video and see if you agree with what I got. It's great self-assessment for you. Let's see if you're doing this correctly. All right, here we go. Some of the force in the y direction. FA's y component is pointing upward, so it's going to be a positive FAY. Up is positive, down would be negative vertically. So it's positive FAY. FBY is pointing downward, so it's minus FBY. FC's y is pointing downward, so it's going to be minus. FC's Y component. All right, now using our shortcuts. To find the Y component, we do the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle. So FA's Y component is FA, 40, times the sine of theta, minus FB's Y component is going to be FB sine 20. FB is 60 times the sine of 20 degrees, minus FCY as FC times the sine of 80, so minus 55 sine of 80. Plugging that in, check it out, see what we get. We get positive 13.68 from FAY pulling it up. Uh, this is 20.52 pulling it down, and we have um, 54.16 pulling it down there. So the majority of this is pulling it down, as we'd expect. It's an 80 degree angle there. That gives us an overall sum of the force in the y direction of negative 61 pounds. And again, what's that mean? It means the overall y component of the net force is 61 pounds in the downward direction. Again, we thought the downward pulls would beat the upward pull, and we were correct. So let's put it all back together. We now have the x component and the y component for the net force. 
We just simply have to do step three and recombine those to find both the magnitude and the direction. We'll be all done. So let's try to clear some space for board over here to do just that. Let's draw these so we have a visual of what's going on. So X component for our net force is 9.24 pounds to the left. Notice I'm just putting the magnitude here. The negative, again, just indicates the direction. 9.24 pounds that way. And then 61 pounds downward. So our net force The one force that could replace FA, FB, and FC and have the same effect is this F net at some angle theta from the x-axis. I'm just going to find what that is. Well, I've got a right triangle there. How could I solve for the magnitude of the net force? And how could I solve for the angle theta? Using your trigger skills from last video, you should be able to do that. Pause the video now if you feel comfortable. Try it out. Otherwise, keep watching and see what we get. Let's solve for the magnitude first. If I know the two legs, how do I find the hypotenuse? Pythagorean theorem sounds like a great way. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, a is going to be 9.24. B is 61.0. And my C is my net force. 9.24 squared plus 61 squared gives me 3,806.38. But that's not my net force, that's my net force squared. So to solve the net force, we're going to take the square root to get rid of the squared. I got it to both sides. So, so I get a net force of 61.7 pounds. That's the magnitude of this overall force. But I still have to find the direction. This force is a vector, and I doesn't need a magnitude. It also needs a direction. So let's do that. How can I find out or describe that direction? Yeah, find the angle theta. How do I do that? Well, I know the opposite side. I know the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse. I know all three sides, so I really could use sine, cosine, tangent. It's really up to me. I personally prefer to use information that's given to me or information I found earlier on in the problem, that there's just less place for mistakes. So I'm gonna avoid using this number since I just found it. Because maybe I made a mistake somewhere here. I'm gonna rely on those two numbers. So I'm gonna use the opposite side and the adjacent side. Which trig function uses opposite and adjacent? So, ka, toa, tangent, that's right. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Let's plug in our values here. Tangent of theta equals, the opposite side is 61 pounds. The adjacent side is 9.24 pounds. Now to solve for theta, I have to get rid of this tangent. How am I going to do that? I'm going to use an inverse trig function. So inverse tangent of tangent of theta, give me theta, inverse tangent of this side, Again, that's confusing. Go back and watch the trig video. Theta is the inverse tangent of 61 over 9.24. In other words, theta is the angle whose tangent is 61 over 24. Go ahead and plug in your calculator. See what you get. You get an angle of 81.4 degrees. There we go. Your teacher's probably going to want you to write it in a nice, succinct way. Your final answer, yes, we have the magnitude, yes, we have the direction, and a picture that really shows what the 81.4 degrees means. Um, not sure how your teacher's going to want you to do this. But I think a picture is really the best way to do that. This might suffice. Um, again, box the answer is a good thing to do. But 61.7 pounds is the magnitude, 81.4 degrees. something like that uh, would be a good way to do that. 61.7 pounds at 81.4 degrees below the negative x-axis uh, is another acceptable way to write that.
Uh, good luck with this type of problem, finding force vectors. Again, don't just make it a math routine that you go through. Uh, really seek to understand what's going on. When you get to trust analysis really soon here in statics, um, they're challenging problems, but you'll feel really accomplished. You're really good about yourself. You understand what's going on. You can solve those problems. So good luck. Continue to watch the videos. Go back and watch if you're confused by anything. And again, watch a video, pause it, try it, and then come back and check. It's a great method. Good luck.